so here are some operating system questions that may occur, uh, that may pop up. So let's actually just begin. So first question, this is going to work. Yeah, there we go. So explain why interrupts are used in the computer system and state two sources of interrupts and explain why these sources have different priorities. Now you can pause the video now if you want to have a go at these. Right, so now that you may have, all, if you've had a go at it, good. If not, here are the answers. So, for explain why interrupts are used, they are is to obtain processor time for a higher priority task, to avoid delays and to avoid data loss, as indicated to the processor that a device needs to be serviced. So you can have any of those things. So you can have what will get you mark would be to obtain process of time from for a higher priority task and then you can get to avoid data loss and to avoid loss of data even so you can get either two of those things so thing for so now let's state two sources of an interrupt and explain why these sources have different priorities immediate power failure so then when the system fails Peripherals such as the printer, when the buffer is empty, it sends the interrupt out. And then there's the clock interrupt. I'm not really sure what that would be. That might just be um, the actual proper time on your system. Then there is user interrupt when the new new user logs on request. So that would be I think that'd be like moving mouse cursor maybe, since the user is moving the mouse cursor. But just do new user logs log on request then there's the software so a software could send uh, the interrupt uh, then there's the reasons so related to it that the example chosen okay uh, then for <laughs> there's an example which is new user can wait but data must be saved before power fails right then so the next one is in a computer system, explain what is meant by an interrupt. One example of an interrupt is a user interrupt. State two other types of interrupts. Explain the need for interrupts to have priorities. So if you pause it now, you can have a go at them. Alright then, so, I, I guess you've had a go at this, or you're just letting the video play on. Uh, so the next... So first result for the first one, if I just click next, oh I've done it wrong. Uh let's skip this bit out actually quickly. Right. Right then, so there so here right, so pause the video. Right then, so I guess you've already had a go at these, or you're just letting the video play through. So, the first one is explain what is meant by an interrupt. So, you can get either of these two. Uh, do not include the message. So, do not say it is a message. you got to say uh, signal sent to a processor. Uh, request for processing time. And allows important tasks to be processed or to take precedence. Now, two other types of interrupts are there's the power failure, which was meant to mention previously, and then there's the peripherals, uh, input output interrupt, well, or input output interrupt. Uh, so then there's clock interrupt as well, and software interrupt. Uh, not hardware, unless explained or example. So do not just say, another type is hardware, you've got to say, or if you do hardware and then you can do an explanation or just do an example, and do not just say timer, say the clock interrupt. Right, and so the next one is explain the need for them to have priorities. So you can get either, it's two marks, so you can get either two of these. So to decide between interrupt and current task, 
to choose which interrupt to process if two or more occurs together, to ensure most urgent task is performed first, to ensure most efficient use of processor. So two main ones that I will probably actually try and remember is uh, to decide between so to, to decide between interrupt and current task, and then to ensure most efficient use of processor. Those would be the two that I would pick. I would try and remember. So the next thing is explain one example of an interrupt that allows the job to be resumed after the system has service interrupt. Describe how the system ensures that it is possible to resume the interrupted job. Describe two reasons why scheduling is used. So if you pause it now, you can have a go at these. Right then, so I guess you've either paused it or, well, you've probably unpaused it actually since you can hear me now. Uh, so, first one, so one example of an interrupt. Uh, so, give an ex one example of an interrupt that allows the job to be resumed after the system has serviced the interrupt. So, let's have a look at the answer. It is one mark though, so I think there's like two answers. Yes, there is. So there's two answers that you can go for. So, there's peripheral, so it has a printer and you say the buffer is empty so don't you can say peripheral but don't just say printer because you try and specify what it is within the printer that's so like the buffer is empty to transmit the data then there's the user interrupt so new user logs a request so it'd be good if you can have like user interrupts then an example although it's only one mark it is good just to have a bit extra as well so describe how the system ensures that it is possible to resume the interrupted job. Values are copied from registers and stored on stack, so they can be replaced in register when ISR has finished. ISR instruction maybe or is that like interrupt is that the interrupt service oh Register or something, I think it might be. Uh, so now the next thing is, uh, I f I'll try and link that back to a video that I did for the, uh, that's in the interrupt video, I think, if it is that. Uh, so next thing is describe two reasons why scheduling is used. Maximize number of users with no apparent delay. Maximize number of jobs processed as quickly as possible. Obtain efficient use of processor time or resources, depending upon priorities, to ensure all jobs obtain processor time or longer jobs do not monopolize the processor. So it's four marks, so I think the mark, I did have a look in the mark scheme, in fact, it's probably like, uh, the, to get the, f f so it'd be, uh, maximize number of users, then with no apparent delay then maximize number of jobs processed as quickly as possible. So those would be like the two main points. It'd be good though if instead of the maximize number of jobs processed, you could probably try and remember the obtain efficient use of processor time or resources, depending on priorities, and to ensure all jobs obtain processor time. So those that would be good to have. So here we go. Describe one method of scheduling. And as always, pause the video if you want to have a go at this. Well then, so now let's have a look at the answer. Round robin. Each user allocates a sort period of time in a sequence. Or system priorities, highest priorities first. Uh, length of job, shortest job first. Uh, then first come, first serve, uh, served. Jobs are processed in order of arrival. Right then, so now let's have a look at this one. So, round robin is a one method of scheduling. So, back there you saw you can have one method of scheduling. So, hopefully this this question might come up. Uh, so, round robin scheduling is one method that may be used by a multi-user operating system. Describe round robin scheduling, and then just explain why jobs are given in differences, different priorities when in a job queue. Uh, these are two separate uh, questions. 
Uh, so let's. So if you pause the video now, we can have a go at these. Right then. So let's have a look at the answers. So describe round rob robin scheduling. Each user allocates a time slice. Uh, when time slice is up, system moves to next user. If next user names processor users given time slice, repeats until all users are serviced. Users may have different priorities. Time slices are very small, so a fraction of a second. Uh, no apparent delay for any user. Uh, so you can have things like up to f so three marks, so three of those points. So uh, each user is allocated a time slice. Uh, repeated until all users are serviced. And I would have to do the no apparent delay for any user. If you're wondering what is up with the P being cut off a bit, that is because this is from the revision guide, so I had to take some screenshots from it. Right then, so now explain why jobs are given different priorities when in a job queue. Some jobs are more urgent na than others. Priorities are used to maximise the use of computer resources. And that's two marks, so you have to get those exact points. Uh, if you wonder why there's no uh, blue box, that's because I've got something that appears instead. Uh, so, state why virtual memory may be needed. Describe how virtual memory is used, and explain one problem that may occur while using virtual memory. So, if you pause the video, you can have a go at these. Right then, so here are the answers. So, why is virtual memory, memory needed? To allow programs to run that need more memory than is available, and that's one mark. Then describe how virtual memory is used. Use of backing store as if it were main memory or temporary storage. Uses paging or fixed size units. Swaps pages between memory and backing store to make space for pages needed. Holds part of the program not in use. Allows programs to run that need more memory than is available. So now, and that is three marks, so three points. So I would do um, uses back in store as if it were main memory, uh, main memory. Then uses paging, uh, swaps pages between memory and back in store to make space for page pages needed. Now I would actually probably do another one just to be safe, which is holds part of the program not in use. Uh, since it doesn't say list free, it's good if you list more because then if one of them's like wrong, like not completely correct, then it's good just to have a backup kind of thing. So explain one problem that occurs while using virtual memory. Uh, so I need two of the following: so disk rushing, a uh, high rate of disk access. So yeah, that'd be one problem. So, so two from, all right. So, discretion or high rate of disk access. Then more time spent transferring pages than processing. Uh, computer may hang. So I would actually probably just stick with the two main ones, which is discretion and more time spent transferring paging pages than than processing. Now here we go, uh, an operating system, so if you pause it you can uh, have a go at these. Right then, so an operating system may use segmentation or paging when managing memory. State two ways in which segmentation and paging are similar. So let's, let's have a look at the answer. So I've said so before you pause it and you must have had a go at it, or you're just watching the video completely through. Both are ways of partitioning memory. Uh, both alloc allow programs to run despite inconsistent memory. Both are used for virtual memory. Segments and pages are both stored on pa uh, back in store. Segments are pages and pages are s assigned to memory when needed. So there's one comma one so it's probably just two marks then.
so two um, answers you have to do. So then there's uh, so I'll do both are ways of partition memory. Uh, segments and paging are assigned to memory when needed. So state one difference between segmentation and paging. Uh, if you have a look at my, if you've watched all my videos, good view. Uh, so this would be. I'll probably just have a look at the video playlists. Well, have a look at the videos, and s then you can find these answers if you want, or you can just watch the video. So, state one difference between segmentation and paging. Segments are different sizes, but pages are fixed size. Segments are complete sections of program, but paging pages are made to fit specific sections of memory. Uh, segments are logical divisions. Uh, pages are physical divisions. So explain one. So that is one mark. So you can get one thing since it says state one difference between memory f. Uh, because it says state one difference between segmentation and paging. So only one thing you should be able to, should actually write down. Explain one problem that may occur when using paging and segmentation. So that's t this is two marks. So let's have a look at the answer. Discretion. Uh, explain one problem that may occur. Yeah. So discretion, uh, when more time is spent swapping pages than processing, and the computer may hang. So it's one mark for saying the problem, and then you have to like explain it a bit. So pretty much just do the discretion where more time is spent swapping pages than processing. All right. Let's have a look at the next one. Right, so in the contents of printing, describe spooling and explain why it's used. In a typical desktop PC computer, so personal computer, uh, operating system, state when the boot file is used and state its purpose. So if you pause it now, you can have a go. Right, so let's have a look at the answers. So the top one, so uh, describe spooling and explain why it's used. So it's four marks, so four points you've got to say so let's see output data to disk drive and storage device for printing at another time uh, to allow sharing on the network uh, job references stored in a queue or buffer avoids delays avoids st uh, speed mismatches as printers are relatively slow jobs can be prioritized so what I will try and remember from this is Output data to disk drive, uh, then for printing at another time, then uh, to allow sharing on a network, and let's see what else I would do. Avoid delays as printers are relatively slow, and then I also do the jobs can be prioritized. Right then, so state one, a boot file is used and what its purpose is. So let's have a look at the answer. Uh, so uh, when the boot file is used, it, uh, while the operating system is loading, uh, when the computer is switched on, and then after post. So it's like, so it's a mark for each thing, so when and then the purpose. So I'll probably just do uh, when the computer system when the computer is switched on, and then the purpose is provides personal settings. So now the next thing, I think this is actually the last one. So explain the purpose and use of file allocation table. So the FAT system, uh, it's a normal like. So yeah. Uh, so hopefully, if you pause it now, you can have a go at these. Oh, I think my voice is starting to go actually. Or I need to get a drink actually. Uh, so now let's actually have a look at the answers. So the pur explain the purpose and the use. So a map of where files are stored on backend stores or hard drives provides addresses and point or pointers to start off files. Stores file names. Stores file sizes. Stores access rights. Identifies free space. Is updated by the operating system when files are saved and deleted 
is used by the operating system when files are accessed. So there's six marks, and there are nine points, I think that is there. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, it is, nine. Uh, so, main things that I'll probably try and remember are uh, a map of where files are stored on back in on hard drive, probably actually, I'll probably remember. And then provides addresses, uh, stores file names, stores file sizes, uh, stores access rights. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll just do another thing which is identifies free space. I hope this has been helpful for you. And uh, if you want to download this PowerPoint, I'll put it. Actually, I'll put this in the main PowerPoint at the end of the operating systems section. So, once again, thanks for watching. Till next time.